Smart device designers need to test devices in many real-world conditions, as users may place them in a multitude of locations, on a table, on a shelf next to a wall, or even in a bathroom. Communication devices similarly need to offer optimum performance for a variety of conference rooms and homes. Measurements of both speech recognition and audio output need to be made in fully characterized rooms with known reverberation time and clarity. Test rooms often need to be configured and treated to replicate the desired test characteristics. The RT60 Room Acoustics module and Soundcheck allows these room acoustic measurements to be made quickly, accurately, and unlike many of the low-cost acoustic software packages out there, with fully calibrated signal paths. So, let's take a look. First, we are going to the first Korean church in Cambridge to make some room acoustics measurements. Then, we'll return to the office to demonstrate the application for characterizing test rooms. This is the first Korean church in Cambridge. Established 42 years ago, this church is located in the heart of Cambridge, where senior pastor Tae Hwan Kim brings traditional Korean Christian worship to the city. Here, you'll find your standard affair of Sunday morning worship, often featuring a live choir and orchestra during services. So, to have live music, you want to have a space that sounds great. So, how does the First Korean Church sound? Inside, we have a massive worship space. We have large vaulted ceilings with sloping trapezoidal sides. We have a large pipe organ adorning the back wall, a spot for the choir during worship services, and the pastor stands on the podium facing the congregation. Now, let's make some room acoustics measurements. My colleague, Cam, is setting up here. He's positioning the microphones in different seats in the pews to simulate if someone was listening to the pastor during a service. He's also positioning a special omnidirectional loudspeaker designed for measuring room acoustics. Here, we have a laptop running Soundcheck 19 with the RT60 module. Connected to it via USB is an AmpConnect 621. Listen's new all-in-one multi-channel interface. Connected to that is a Brulin Care 4292L OmniPower sound source. This is going to allow us to radiate sound out evenly in all directions, since the speakers are all connected in a series parallel network. This also allows us to guarantee that they're all in phase. And of course, we have the microphones you saw Cam setting up earlier. We have four omnidirectional calibrated SCM measurement microphones set up around the room. Now, it's time to make some measurements. Over to you, Cam. So now, we'll play the test signal. You'll hear that, and we'll let the microphones record the response. That's a fast and accurate measurement of clarity and reverberation time. So now, let's go see what the sequence just did. What we can see on the top display window are the T20, T30, and T60 reverberation time curves from the average of the four microphones. We can see that the reverberation time is higher in the range of 500 hertz to 2 kilohertz, and then decreases above that. This tells us that sounds in the 1 to 2 kilohertz range will reverberate the most and may sound harsh to some people. Below that are the C7, C50, and C80 clarity curves, also averaged from the four microphones. These metrics indicate the absence of smearing of sound, and ideally we'd like to see values greater than 0 dB. You can see that the C50 and C80 curves mirror each other quite closely, and that the C50 curve is in the range of a little under 2 to 3 decibels. This indicates that speech intelligibility will be pretty good in this space. Let's take a look at the test sequence we used to measure this. The sequence starts with a message step to configure the AmpConnect 61 audio interface for this test. Following that is a prompt that allows the user to recall demo data or begin with a measurement. Next, the acquisition step will play the stimulus, a frequency log suite. We use this test signal as it has excellent noise immunity and it's easy to separate the fundamental from the harmonics, which minimizes the distortion effects on the measurements. This acquisition step is responsible for playing the frequency log sweep stimulus and recording on the four microphone channels. After that is the analysis step. This is where the room acoustics values are determined and a backwards integrated impulse response method is used. Steps 6 through 11 are post-processing steps that average the curves generated from each recording. Let's open up step 6 as an example. This step is taking the average of four T20 curves, which we created in the analysis step, and are saved as a custom group in the memory list. 
The output of this step is presented as the single T20 line on the graph. The same logic is applied for the T30 curves, T60 curves, and all three of the clarity curves. One question that often comes up is how we know we have made a good measurement, as the signal in relation to the noise floor can be an issue. We need about 60 dB of drop in order to get a reliable and accurate measurement. I will demonstrate how to check this in soundcheck. Under the room acoustic settings in the time tab of the analysis step, check the show impulse response and backwards integrated waveforms checkbox. Reapply the analysis step, and now let's go look in our memory list. If we go to the waveform tab, you can see that we have all backwards integrated and impulse response waveforms for a specific frequency. So for example, let's look at the impulse response for mic 2 at 2 kilohertz. You can see that we have at least 65 dB difference between the top of the IR, where the slope flattens out, and we start to hit the noise floor at the bottom. We have plenty of drop here, so this should be a reliable measurement. Now, to take a closer look at how Soundtrack processes these measurements, here's our DSP engineer, Rahul. So Rahul, could you briefly describe how room reverberation calculations are made? Sure. We use the impulse response method specified in the ISO 3382 standard. Here, we use a logarithmic sweep to excite the room, and then we use the time-selective response algorithm to calculate the impulse response. We are able to see the exponential decay of the log sweep in the room, and this eventually reaches the room's noise floor. We trim this impulse response to only the room decay section, and calculate the backward integrated impulse response, taking the best fit over different decay ranges and extrapolating for 60 dB decay gives us a room reverberation time value. So how is this impulse response method with a sweep different from using a sustained noise signal? Both methods are able to calculate the room reverberation time, but the impulse response method is a newer implementation and has benefits over the interrupted noise method. The use of a logarithmic sweep gives a clean impulse response, and so the signal-to-noise ratio is much better than that for the interrupted noise method. Also, the use of log sweep helps to exclude the effects of speaker distortion from the impulse response. So I know doing this in soundcheck, we are able to use fully calibrated signal paths, but why is this important? This is important because the measurements are sensitive to the noise floor of the room. So having calibrated measurements allows us to accurately measure the noise floor and set the speaker level accordingly. We want to excite the room to approximately 75 dB above the noise floor to accurately measure the T60 of a room. Thank you, Rahul. Now that we know how the sequence works, let's take a look again how this might be useful for device developers. We took some measurements of a conference room here in the office, and Cam's going to compare those measurements with the measurements we made at the church. This room has a smaller volume than the church, with fabric furniture, plants, and office decor. As you'd expect, this means we will see lower reverberation times. The highest reverb time is only about 850 milliseconds compared to around 2.2 seconds for the church. Above 500 hertz, the reverberation time curve slopes downwards because of the materials in this room, such as fabric, sheetrock, wood, etc., absorb the higher frequencies. Similarly, the clarity curves are very different from the church. We can see that the C50 curve is about 4 dB for most of the audible frequency range and indicates average speech intelligibility for a room this size. So, I hope the short video has been useful and demonstrated how easy it is to make room acoustics measurements with Soundcheck. If you want to learn more, talk to your local sales representative or visit listeninc.com.